If you are really happy to be here, please shout a better amen. amen. Please celebrate God as we take our seats. Amen. Thank you, choir. Um, my 15 minutes starts now. <laughs> Firstly, I just want to acknowledge uh, the leadership of the church that we have in here. This is absolutely everybody that is of importance from coast to coast, from Kenya to Connecticut to everywhere. Um, please help me celebrate our daddies and mommies that are in house. <laughs> Everyone is here. This is this is uh, as it is a day of celebration and joy for for us and for me. Um, it is also like a mini exam because. Uh, my formerly my father-in-law, but now my father-in-law and my mother-in-law are here as well. <laughs> and being my mentor is going to judge everything I say. And of course, my Bible college uh, provost is also here. So forgive me if I don't quote some of the Bible points. It's because of uh, time, sir. Um, my sister, you're extremely special. Uh, I, I mean, I cannot over push that. That did you release the chairman and also released me. Um, I was begging him that I shouldn't go so it won't be like uh, I brought you to America and now you are doing your own personal ministry. Um, but he released us and um, there's many people in here that came 100% just to celebrate you and to celebrate the kindness in the hearts of uh, your parents as well. So we are super grateful to God for today. Um, so I'll go quickly into it. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. The King James Version, 21st century. If you're wondering why I moved the pulpit, out of honor, we can't stand where the fathers are standing when we are being given an assignment as a little one. Because there are way better speakers and preachers in here. And youth pastors as well. Genesis 2 verse 18 and the Lord God said it is not good that man should be alone I will make him a helper mate for him another version maybe a younger generation of version says then the Lord God said I see that it is not good for man to be alone I will make the companion he needs just one just right for him. One just right for him. My brother Emmanuel, grab my hand and tell her that I have finally found the one that is just right for me. Amen. I like your energy. <laughs> so this is going to be a conversation between the both of you and me and we'll just let them listen in. Okay, um, so focus on God, but still focus on me at the same time. Um, you know, when you were about to leave Nigeria, uh, you said that uh, Daddy Oba said you should see me, and I kept avoiding you. It's because I didn't want to do unto you what I have done to others that have been marrying either my baby sisters or my, my connected sisters or anyway, because I didn't want to scare the living daylight out of you. Uh, when Tolu got married, that's my new dad's uh, daughter, now my sister, to Michael, to Mike Bamiloye's son, Joshua, I removed the bond again in the meeting and I told him, if anything happens to this girl, I will hunt you. Would, you know, maybe Daddy Joe will bring you back to life. That's just a summary. So that's why I was avoiding you. I wanted you to make it to America first. Um, so I'm happy that I've been called to do this today. Uh, in not too many words, we'll bring a mantle from Daddy Gio if we need to bring you back. But I'm, I can see that you are with me, so we are 100% good. All right. Please celebrate God for him. <laughs> so, 
Silently in the back of my mind, I knew all those honorariums that your boss has been giving me. One day, he's going to call to collect. <laughs> and this is the day. My sister, the first part is for you. The husband needs are very, very simple. Men are usually simple individuals. Um, they don't ask for much. First is respect. You have to please respect him. There's a million and one Bible text to back that up. Um, but if you use Leviticus 26 verse 9, and, and I know that the daddies are, you know, with a pen and paper to cross-check me, but it says, for I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. There's the benefit to respect. Um, if you respect this uh, young man, um, the rules changes now. He is now the general overseer in your house. He is the mayor. He is the senator. He is also the president. But in this case, he won't trip and fall. Okay? Um, church, stay with me. I'm having a conversation with the newlyweds. So please respect him. It, it's a major thing for us. And of course, appreciate the littlest of things. Um, we, that God made first, we are actually extremely sensitive to, to being appreciated. We, are, we form the whole hard shell and all of that, but when you appreciate us, we will do way above what it is that you've not even asked. The same way, you know, God said, let us make man in our own image. Hence why we do praise and we do worship so that he can do more. 98% of the time when Daddy Gio is out about walking from streets to streets across the world and especially on the camp, he is giving thanks. It is just the 2% that he might try and sneak in a request. And God then in turn react to that thanksgiving. So appreciation always wins. I remember the first time I was given an holiday after about eight years of working as a personal assistant. I stood in the, in the, in the well, how would I put this? In Yoruba, it's called Orita Meta, but this is in Dubai. So the four corner of the Dubai Mall. Um, and I was just looking. So my wife came with the three children then and, in, and the maid that went with us, or nanny. And she said, what are you doing? I said, I'm looking out for those my mates that you always say that your mates are doing these same things. I'm looking for those my mates that will bring the whole family from Nigeria in a club class, Emirates, and a nanny um, in the middle of a recession. So all I was just asking for then was a little form of appreciation. Uh, um, but she got the gist. Second one, sex, sex, sex. Church, please say sex. Okay. For us, it's like food. Um, before breakfast, during breakfast, after breakfast, it's, it, it, we need it. It helps. Um, like my first um, youth pastor said, he said that if the lion is fully fed before he leaves home, there's no amount of meat you can dangle in front of him that he would still want to eat anything. So in order to safeguard him, you know, he's anointed. Uh, the purpose of the anointed person is to protect the anointing so that the anointing will in return protect the anointed. So your own assignment is to ensure that our anointing remains protected. Can I get an amen? amen. So number four, if you're counting, is trust. You have to please trust them. You have to please trust them. There have been many occasions in which things will be difficult to explain. Jonah coming out after, you know, three days in the mouth of the fish and then going into Nineveh. And then his wife said, so where have you been? You only said you were going to Nineveh and now it's like four or five days later. When he went, well, I was in the mouth of a fish. Like, really, Jonah? Really? Mouth of a fish? You couldn't have found a better one. Mouth of a fish, you say. But trust, it really was there. There was no way you could have taken a selfie or recorded anything. There was no evidence. Even the people that threw him into the water ran away thinking he was dead. So, please trust them. Um, because that would work for both of you. 
uh, freedom in a certain way. Freedom. Freedom for him to watch football. I'm not sure what sports he's into. Um, I'm not sure if it's ice hockey, although, you know, we are from Nigeria. Uh, so that ice hockey might not be a sport for him. Maybe it's basketball. Freedom. Um, so that he can watch and, you know, get some me time sometimes. But as, as I'm looking at him right now, he doesn't even want any me time. He just... He just wants you all throughout his whole time. And of course, food. Food, food. Um, that's the quickest way to get any man. Um, so you have to feed him. You have to feed him so that he doesn't lose focus on his destiny. Like uh, our brother in the Bible in the person of Esau. You have to feed him. Make sure it's your own food that he, pre he prefers. Like now that we do all these journeys with Daddy Gio, um, I don't know how best to say it, but how will I leave Nigeria and come and be eating Nigerian food in America? And since my wife is not the one preparing it, I would rather just go and find a Thai restaurant somewhere or a Chinese. And then when I get back to Nigeria, let me eat what my wife cooks. And, and sir, this is a warning to you. In case you fall into a dilemma, which I find myself once in a while, maybe... Mommy sent food to you. She also made food. And you meet both of it at home because you're such an amazing husband. Please, 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 eat our own first. <laughs> and call mommy and say, thank you for the food. It was really nice. <laughs> because... Mommy also made her, so you are not lying. If you ate her food and you say, Mommy, thank you for the food, it all connects. Trust me, you will need this recording. It will keep you of marriage for at least 50 years and more in Jesus' name. So because of my time, I have, oh, three minutes. This is the wife's needs. Um, this is the wife's needs. Over to you now, sir. Ah, she needs Attention. Attention. Attention, attention. Attention to detail. Attention to the slightest of things. Attention to maybe, you know, a manicure is nice, a pedicure is nice, a smile. Attention. You need to learn everything about her in and out. Full-blown investigation. You are allowed. You are allowed. <laughs> okay? She also needs affection. Um, I had to understand that as a fixer, my job is to listen and actually listen, not to go and fix. Sometimes they just want to talk to us so that they can empty their mind out. So you just listen. That was hard for me. Because maybe she's saying it, I'm already looking at the results as in how I can make sure, make it happen, and all of that. But in some cases, she just wants to tell me. So I should sit still and listen. Some of the best times my wife and I has ever had is sitting in the room, TV off, and we are just talking. Two, three hours. Maybe after the first two hours, then she will now come to what actually has to do with herself. It might, first one might be about everybody else and what anyone else said. What someone wore, who didn't bring this one, who brought that one, who looked at her funny. So build the auto response. Ah, mm-hmm, okay, wow. Really? Oh my God. It is well. <laughs> then protection. Protection. Um, as number three, protection. And this is both physically and spiritually. There's this image that I'm sure you've seen before where there's an umbrella and God is sitting on top. Then you see the husband's umbrella and then the wife is below, which means that physically you need to ensure she's safe. Spiritually, you need to make sure that you are pure so that there's no cracks that allows any attack to come in. So you have to make sure she's protected the same way you would protect your rib. If I was to come and punch you now, you know it would hurt. So normally, boxers would guard their rib, yeah? Um, so make sure you do that. And the interesting thing is the rib, the assignment of the rib is to protect organs that are vital to you. 
So if you want to be okay, make sure you protect her. That would guarantee your own safety. So please protect her, protect her. Um, church, my time is done, but I have two more points. So except after CG rules will allow me three more minutes, um, I'm supposed to drop the mic now. Oh, okay, so they have sanctioned it that I can go on. You heard it too, because when Daddy Joe watches this. Then provision, provision. Um, God will help you. You will become a billionaire in Jesus' name. Your own kind of billionaire will not wear any funny wigs in Jesus' name. That's an American joke. I'm sure you get it. But please provide for her. And then be open. Um, if she knows what you have, then her demands with the help of the Holy Spirit would be inside what you have. Um, <laughs> because if you're, and I'm going, to, I'm going to link this to the next one, which is communication. Because if you communicate clearly, then it makes it easy for her to know where you stand. There was a period in time in which uh, my wife was doing a course, uh, a baking course, and she was hanging out with some lucky big babes, and she came home one day and said, why are you not paying me salary um, of about 250K a month? And I was wondering, where is this coming from? You know how much, I work for a charity organization called RCCG. You know how much our salary is? In fact, when I get paid, I just transfer it directly to you, to a joint account. So where am I? If I'm paying you 250K a month, then I'm stealing that idiot's money, for sure. Um, but then I understood that it was communication. So maybe I needed to just be showing her the alert fully. And let me, warn, let me just give you a heads up. If you, as there are many married people in here that are looking at me right now, sometimes they have these silent disagreements when nobody's talking to each other for a while. And then sometimes they let it breed. Don't let that happen. Because if you're not talking to your babe, someone else is talking to her. Garden of, Garden of Eden. Adam was not talking to his babe. Satan was talking to... So, communicate. If she's angry, be there. I'm not allowing this fight. Yeah? We are not... Be upset, but I'm still here. Yeah? My wife knows that I don't eat pepper. So when she's angry, she will add pepper to the food. I will still eat it. <laughs> I will eat it. She will say, this is not prepared in love. I'm, I'm eating it with love. Even if I'm going to be in the toilet for the next four days, I will eat it like that with the pepper. So please, communicate, communicate, communicate. Communication is the biggest thing. Even God made it a standard. Because if he did not say, let there be light in Genesis chapter 1, if he did not communicate it, the Holy Spirit would have just kept overing and overing till now. So communicate. Um, and then, of course, in conclusion, <laughs> the Bible says in Amos chapter 3 verse 3, it says, Amos chapter 3 verse 3, it says, can two work together except they agree? So you have to be in an agreement. And one of the prayers that... Um, our daddies would pray for you both today is that anytime you come together and kneel to ask God for something exactly like this, then he would do it. As Pastor Fadel was praying, he said about what both of you can do when you are together. Ten thousands, tens of thousands, millions, many things that you'll be able to achieve together, but you have to come together. In Genesis 11 verse 6, um, <laughs> Genesis 11 verse 6, and the Lord said himself, behold, the people are one, and they have all one language, which means you have to be one. You also have to have one language. You even have to have your own coded ways of speaking. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to start that one. It's, it's always nice when I'm in a service with my wife, some of the things that we are saying during the service. <laughs> I always feel for the other people. I hope they have a translator that will be able to know what we are saying. <laughs> including the auntie in front that is trying to impress Daddy Gio but doesn't know the words of the hymns. <laughs> we just signal ourselves, we already know that, okay, that's the one. Anyway, <laughs> and the Bible says, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Imagined, just even thinking about it, not trying to do it, just the thought. 
as long as you are together and you are united. And do not let anyone come in between you. You will see those people that will want to give marriage advices and all of that one. Tell them to go and write a book so that they can be advising whoever wants to read it. This is the bond. The Bible even makes it clear that the cord of threefolds is harder to break. That's because there's you, her, and God inside of it. Okay, so that's it. And they've been signaling me that my five minutes is done. <laughs> so just in case we have uh, anyone in here today that your marriage has not been doing very well with this line up, um, the purpose of being in a place like this is they're giving an opportunity to tap into a new birth, a new child, a new marriage that is happening. So please bow your heads and just pray to God that as you are already in the house and this new couple are doing, they are starting their own journey afresh, the same way yours was fresh, that you tap into the grace that is bringing joy, that is bringing love, that is bringing peace. And if there's anything that has been mentioned that you want your other half to be able to display, just tap into it. Tap into it that wherever she is, wherever he is, that the blessings of today would go to that individual. And in case you're single, you're single and you want the same thing to happen for you, go ahead and just pray. Go ahead and pray and ask God that you would connect to this. Go ahead and pray and ask God. And maybe it's not you. Maybe it's your son. Maybe it's your cousin, your nephew or your auntie. Go ahead and just ask God that we tap into this new, fresh marriage today. That as it's working out for them, it would work out for me, it would work out for us. And God Almighty would help us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' precious mighty name we've prayed. Amen. My Father, my God, I thank you for your daughter and your son. Thank you for this union today. Thank you for the Adele case. Thank you, of course for the adenages that have brought something so amazing and kept her till now. Father, we are asking, oh God, that as they start this journey, start it with them in Jesus' name. Lord, don't ever leave their hands in the mighty name of Jesus. And for as many of us that are in here, that we're already married and we're having slight deviation on the journey of the purpose of our marriage, Father, we ask that today your own GPS will redirect us to the proper route in Jesus' name. And for those who are in here that are single and praying that God, please, let this happen for me. Whoever is willing to shout the loudest amen, answer them first in Jesus' name. Lord, by the next time we gather for a celebration, let it come with testimonies in Jesus' name. Thank you, almighty God. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we've prayed. Amen. Amen.